Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew Clark and today I want to talk about weird guitar techniques. Now, I'm not talking about weird as in bad weird. I'm talking about weird as in unconventional, in a good way. So these are the things that when you're learning with a guitar teacher or when you're learning on your own using online videos or something like that, that you might miss. Things that won't necessarily get touched on in traditional lessons. Now there are a ton of these weird awesome techniques out there, but in this video I just want to focus on three. So the artists we're going to be looking at are three of my favorite players and they are Derek Trucks, John Mayer, and Chris Buck. Now before we get into the techniques, if you like videos like this, guitar lessons, guitar gear, productivity, things like that, please consider subscribing to the channel. I have a goal of reaching a thousand subscribers and I'm getting very close and it would just mean a lot to me if you could help me get there. With that said, let's get into it. All right, so the first player we're gonna be looking at is Derek Trucks. Now Derek Trucks is primarily a slide player, but even if you don't play slide or you don't have interest in playing in slide, there's something we can take away from his right hand technique and incorporate it into our own style of playing. So here's the finger style technique that Derek Trucks uses. Now, if you ignore the slide and you listen to what the right hand is doing, you're gonna hear a kind of thwumpiness. I don't know how else to describe it. But basically what he's doing is he's playing muted strings along with the actual note that he wants to come through. And this creates a really cool percussive effect and it works especially well on lead lines that aren't being played super fast. Now to do this technique, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hand and you're gonna put it in its natural position on the guitar as if you were gonna pick with a pick. And instead of just isolating one string with your finger like this, you're actually gonna play all the strings like that. So right now I'm just muting with my left hand. And you'll see that sometimes Derek Trucks will plant his hand like this. Sometimes he'll use just one finger. Sometimes he'll use two fingers. Sometimes it almost looks like he's playing with all his fingers at once like this, but you just gotta find what works best for you. The idea is that when you're playing a specific string, so let's say you wanna play a note on the G string, you wanna make sure you're hitting as many adjacent strings at the same time. So it would look like this. So if I were to just play that note on its own, and with this technique. So it's kind of subtle, but you can hear that it adds a certain amount of percussiveness. And a cool thing you can try with it is using it on a single string line. So a lot of slide players will play up and down on one string. So we can kind of emulate that without a slide and you can use this technique and you can kind of go like this. Now the important thing with this technique that you'll notice from my playing is the muting part. So when you play, something I like to do is maybe play with your third or your fourth finger and then lay these two first fingers across the strings to mute so that when you fret this down, let's say, right? And it's gonna feel a little bit unnatural at first. It's gonna take a little bit of time to get that technique down. But muting is a really important skill for any style of playing. So it's not something that you're gonna be using just for this technique. Now one final kind of cool thing you can do with this is what I do because I do play with a pick is I tuck my pick away in this finger. So it's kind of weird. I don't know if everybody can do this, but I tuck my pick in like this on my first finger. And then I use my actually my middle two fingers to do this technique. So then I can switch very quickly between picking Tuck it up. So depending on how you want the note to come out and kind of sound to the listener, you can pick and choose between do I want to use my fingertips or do I want to use the pick. One quick thing to note is that this technique actually works with the pads of your fingers and not with your fingernails, which is kind of nice because I don't like having long nails. And unless you're playing a very specific style of guitar, it's actually a lot easier to play with really short nails. Okay, so for the next technique, this is something that I learned from the one and only John Mayer, but it's really been made popular by thousands of guitar players before him. Most notably, Jimi Hendrix did this a ton, but I just say John Mayer because that's where I learned it from. Way back in the day, I was watching some live performances of John Mayer on YouTube, and I noticed that he was taking his thumb and playing over the top of the fretboard. Now, 
Now, thankfully, I'm somebody with reasonably long fingers, so this might be a challenge for those of you who have shorter fingers. But if your thumb is long enough, then it's definitely something you should make use of because instead of just having your four digits, you have a fifth. So to start using this technique, we gotta break one of your good habits. Now, that is putting your thumb on the back of the neck of the guitar when you play. Now, for a lot of things you play, that's the right spot to put your thumb. But obviously, if we want to start using it over the top of the fretboard, we've got to move it from the back of the neck all the way over like this. So it's back here, right, like this. We move it all the way over. Now, it's not exactly like grabbing a baseball bat or something like that, but it's close. You can see my wrist goes from being straight like this to kind of being bent in like this. And it's gonna be a little uncomfortable. It's probably gonna hurt your thumb for the first while as you get used to it, but that's totally normal and just something that will go away with time the more you do it. And your goal should just be to be able to press down and essentially fret the low string. So a low string note. So right here. You turn off the delay. Now there are a few useful things you can do with your thumb over the top. The first one obviously being that now you can play chords with your thumb resting over top. It actually stops you from needing to play the full bar in a bar chord. So if a bar chord looks like this, this would be a G sharp major bar chord. So now what you can do is you can leave these three fingers exactly where they are, remove this first finger, take your thumb all the way around. So we have... And then this last finger, our index finger, instead of barring, it's just gonna be on the top two strings and we just do a little mini bar. And honestly, even if you just wanna fret the B string and you just wanna let it mute the high E string, you're getting most of the chord anyway. And then if you bar this. And then what you can do is you can move this around, right? You can. Now, if we wanted to make a minor shape doing the same thing, we would leave everything the same except we would remove this finger. And now we do have to make a little bit more of a bar. So now we're barring the three strings with that first finger right there. So we went from this. We scooch this up like this and we take this finger off. This one's a little bit tougher. It does require a little bit of a squeeze, but if your guitar is set up properly, it's honestly not gonna be that bad. And now just using these shapes, we can play all over the fretboard like this. Now, if you really want to, you can actually reach even further and you can fret that A string as well. I feel like this is something that's pretty advanced. It's kind of hard to get your thumb all the way over there. Uh, sometimes you will see me playing chords like this. So for a C bar chord, I will reach all the way over and play like this. But it's a little bit tough because you don't really get to mute that E string consistently, especially if you're standing or you're moving around, it becomes a little bit hard. So I don't really recommend doing this. It's more of a low E string thing. Where this technique can really shine is when you're standing while you play. And that's because when you sit, your guitar is up quite high on your body, right? So it becomes pretty easy to put your thumb behind the neck. But when you stand, if you don't want your strap all the way up here, you want it down low, you're bending your wrist in a really weird way. And to make that more comfortable, when you do this, all of a sudden, all that tension in your wrist is gone, right? So when I'm playing live, I honestly really ditch these shapes all together, the standard bar chord shape, and if I need to play that low string, I'll play it with my thumb like this, just because it's so much more comfortable, and I find that if I've got a long set, or a lot of times I will play three or four hours straight, and playing bar chords gets super tiring, playing it like this, super easy, it's natural, there's no tension in my arm, in my shoulder, in my wrist, and the chords sound the exact same. So one of the other handy things that this can do is it can be used as a tool for muting. So when you play open chords, let's say the C major chord, for example, right? When you play that chord, you're not supposed to play that low E string, it sounds terrible. Right, it sounds awful. So instead of having to be super accurate and look back here, and make sure that you're not playing that low E string, what I like to do is I just sneak my thumb up over like this and I don't fret anything. I just bring it so that it just touches that string, mutes it, so now when I play, without it,
And the same thing can be done with like a D chord where you want to mute two strings. It's actually pretty easy. Like I said, it's hard to fret that A string, notes on that A string, but it's pretty easy to mute over there. So it just wraps around like this. With no thumb. With the thumb. Just cleans everything up really nice. And then the final little trick with this thumb over the fretboard type thing is just that you can use it to hold a bass note while you're soloing or while you're playing rhythm stuff. So this kind of just goes back to the same thing with the chords. But if let's say you wanted to play a minor pentatonic scale and you're playing it up here, so in B minor on the seventh fret, instead of playing, I can play like, And something it's really great for is if you are using primarily those shapes of chords to play a song, anytime you land on that minor six chord where it lines up right over top of the minor pentatonic scale, you can just add stuff to your chords that sounds really cool and it makes you sound a lot better than you probably are. So if you watch this, if I'm gonna play in the key of B minor, for example, or the key of D major where that B minor fits, right? I can do something like this. All right, and now we're on to the third and final technique. And this is something that I picked up from an unbelievable guitar player named Chris Buck. I saw him originally on Instagram, and then I followed him on YouTube. You can find him in a bunch of places and just listen to some of his playing. It's absolutely mind blowing. <laughs> And I don't really know the name for this technique. I've heard some people call it slurs, some people call it squiggles. I really don't know what it's called, but basically what it is is it's a tiny slide. So to do the most basic form of this little trick, all we're gonna do is we are gonna start one semitone above our target note. So let's say we're playing an A minor pentatonic. <laughs> and we wanna hit that note, right, right there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start a half step above it, like this, so one fret up, and when we hit the note, we're gonna slide down. So it's not gonna be like that, even though that's essentially what it is. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go. So it's super fast, it's almost in one quick motion, so. Now I like to use a little bit of adjacent string picking on those muted strings as well. I feel like it brings out that note a little bit better, but you don't have to do that. You can just play the one note. And you can use any finger, whatever makes you comfortable. So you can do it here too. Whatever makes you comfortable, you can use, but that's the first part of the technique and you'll use that. So if I'm playing, Just like that, right? Something like that. It sounds great. It's just a tiny little bit of movement when you're playing a lick, kind of spices things up a little bit. Now the next level to this is you're gonna start on the note that you wanna land on, you're gonna go up to the note, and then you're gonna go back down to the note. Now this is something that takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort to get this to sound really smooth. And the important thing is that it actually doesn't come from your arm, it comes from your wrist and kind of your fingers to do it. So yeah, it's essentially a wrist motion. So what it sounds like is this. But it's really fast, so it's like this. And it sounds really cool when you do it and then go into another note, so like. Like I said, it's gonna take you a little bit of time to get down, but if you just start kind of incorporating it into your practice time, you will get it. It's not hard necessarily. It's just something that you'll kind of get the muscle memory for and eventually be able to do it. But yeah, it's like this. And it's something that you can use in conjunction with kind of level one of this technique, that first little slide down that I showed you. So you can kind of mix and match like this. Thank you. 
Okay, and so once you get that down, we can get into the really advanced har part, and it just sounds so cool, and I don't really see people teaching it on the internet, but it's something that Chris Buck does a lot, and it's something that I am just kind of now learning, and something that I wanna be incorporating into my own playing a lot more, and what you gotta do for this one is you gotta do that up and down slur, but you're doing it off of a bend. So what it sounds like is this. I'll use the same note that I was using to teach the other one, so right here. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna bend up. Now I'm bending up a whole tone, uh, two frets, but it doesn't really matter what you bend up to. It, you can be a bigger bend or even a smaller bend, a little half step bend, whatever. But basically you're gonna bend up and you're gonna do that. So it sounds pretty terrible like that, but if you do it quickly, pretty cool, right? Sounds pretty awesome. So it's like kind of bending up And then it kind of walks you down, but it does it in a way that's pretty unique. So I'll do it one more time here. And you can do this in all different spots on the neck. It sounds really cool. So up here. And if you're struggling to get it down cleanly, sometimes just adding a bunch of effects is gonna kind of hide some of your mistakes and inconsistencies, but it also just makes it sound really cool. So here it is with some other effects on it. So as you can hear, I'm definitely not on Chris Buck's level yet, but I do think it sounds really cool, and it's a weird technique, right? It's not something that you see a lot of guitar players doing, and it's something that I'm gonna incorporate into my playing and just kinda make it my own. So there you have three techniques that I think are really weird in such a great way, and maybe you don't wanna take all of them and use them for yourself, but even if you take some and you kind of adapt them for your own style of playing, I think it's a great way to kinda get yourself outside of the box of traditional guitar learning. It seems like so often now when you learn how to play guitar, it's so rigid, you're stuck in this box, it's like, hey, learn these scales. Hey, practice along to the metronome. Hey, do this thing. And it's not really that much fun, and there's a lot of creativity that gets sucked out of it. And I think that's one of the reasons a lot of guitar players quit early on, is because a lot of people are kind of taking the fun out of it. So I'd like to know from you, are there other weird guitar techniques that you've learned from your favorite guitar players? I'm sure there are literally hundreds or thousands of other techniques out there that I don't even know about. So if you can think of one, please leave it in the comment section below. With all that said, I hope you learned something from this video. I really enjoy making stuff like this, and I have a whole lot more planned. So please make sure you're subscribed subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a really awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.